The veggies are officially starting to roll in and this may sound weird, but it's actually time to start thinking about seed saving. Because if you are into reducing either your grocery bill or just building that survival's garden or seed bank, then saving seeds from your harvest is incredibly important. We always hear about people building prepper gardens or buying those survival seeds off the internet, but did you know that none of that really matters if you don't have a plant adapted to your environment? Well, the plants you're currently growing in your garden, whether it's in ground, in a container, in a raised bed, are all designed to survive and thrive in your environment. So today's video, I'm gonna show you how to select the cream of the crop that will guarantee you a harvest every single year based on some very specific characteristics or phenotypes you may want to look at. Now this is not just specific to cold climate gardeners. This will also apply to those of you in hotter environments. You just got to pick those characteristics that you're looking for. So every year your plants are going to yield differently depending on environmental factors. So some years you're going to have a bumper crop of tomatoes. Other years you're going to have a bumper crop of onions, garlic, squash, you name it. And it's based off things like heat, water content, humidity, even sometimes altitude can play a factor role or affect those other environmental factors. And we also know that our environment goes in cycles. It can have seasons or seasons in a row that are incredibly warm, as well as seasons in a row that are wet and cool. That's why when you're saving seeds, you actually want to keep in mind what this summer looked like for you. So here in Western Canada, it is dry and it is hot. And because of that, we can note that because the fruits we're getting are particularly good at producing in a hot and dry environment. Now, if I would have saved seeds from five years ago, that would have been cold and wet, and therefore those plants are great at thriving in a cold, wet environment. Kind of see what I'm getting at here? If we know that we have a hot, dry climate, we wanna select plants that are not only producing, but producing fruits that are worth keeping. Now, one thing you're gonna notice in a hot, dry environment is some plants will produce they don't produce much of anything. So if you notice the plant is struggling, meaning it's producing smaller sized fruit or fruits that have blossom end rot, which is very common on tomatoes and peppers and squash and winter squash and even summer squash in a hot dry environment, you don't wanna keep these. But if you find a tomato that seems to be doing okay or a cucumber that seems to be doing okay despite the high heats, then that is actually one that you wanna tag off. So what I like to do, I'll tag it off with a tie of some sort, or I will, you know, the camping, the trail camping tape, you could use that, you could use a clip, anything that's going to indicate to you that you wanna save the fruit from that, the seeds from that fruit. So step one is identifying what season you're in, cold and wet or hot and dry, then finding the plant or the, the fruit that is performing best in this environment and saving from that. Then when you mark your seed packets, you know when you're in a cycle of hot and dry, you start these seeds. When you're in a cycle of cold and wet, you start the others. Now step two of seed saving is actually finding plants that you know are producing fruits sooner in the season. Now this is not just particular to us cold climate gardeners who have a short season, but it also applies to those of you in really warm climates where your summers are nearly impossible to grow in. So fruits and vegetables that are able to produce earlier in the year give you a guaranteed harvest. So best way to look at this is find fruits that not only have developed a fruit, but have become harvestable. So this is a buffalo uh, tomato here that I've picked. And this is a fruit that, or a tomato that is ready much sooner than any of my beef steaks or any of my romas. Um, even some of my cherries are not even this close. My plums, you name it, are nowhere near this. And so this buffalo is a good indicator. The fact that this buffalo tomato is ready to go is a great indicator of a plant that I want to save seeds from because I'm guaranteed to get a harvest even if a frost hit in the middle of August, which 
Sounds weird, but trust me, it happens. Plants you wouldn't want to save seeds from because they decided to flower earlier in the season would be things like lettuce or spinaches or arugula, cabbage or broccoli or Brussels sprouts or uh, cauliflower because those that's what we call bolting. So these plants are more prone to bolting, which makes them non-edible. That means we wanna avoid harvesting from those plants because we would just have very bolt-prone plant seeds from our garden. So those ones, we're just gonna leave the dust, but things that are producing fruits nice and early, we wanna capture those and keep those in our back pocket. Again, indicating hot, dry, early harvest on the packaging. Now in other cases, you may want the opposite. Something that's taking a little bit longer to harvest. The reason for this is because it will give you a continual supply of fresh eats. So if you're noticing a tomato is a little bit farther behind, or a cucumber is taking a little bit longer to get ready, maybe a lettuce or a pepper plant is a little bit harder to germinate, you wanna Mark that down because those are seeds that you can start at the same time you start all your other ones, but will allow you to harvest later, giving you a continual food supply. Again, you want to indicate the season or the environment it's in and the harvest type it's giving you. Now, if you want it to be really advanced in this sense, you could actually look at phenotypes in your garden, meaning characteristics that your plants have. Say you like them, and then harvest from it. So in the case of tomatoes, if you didn't have access to trellising or you have limited amounts of trellis trellising places or structures, then you may wanna choose a tomato that's producing lots of tomatoes, but is dwarf in nature. So for example, I have one tomato plant right now that is well over nine feet high, and that is very difficult to pulp fruits off of without a ladder or just simply bending and breaking the plant to get at. That is not ideal. <laughs> That's something that you probably don't wanna save seeds from. However, these guys here are only about three feet tall. Now, given they are under a credible amount of stress this year because of how hot and dry it is, but this is a phenotype that I would wanna capture because this is harvestable. I can touch every part of this plant without having to worry. But the nine foot tall one, that's difficult. And that is a phenotype that I do not wanna replicate in my garden year after year. So say you're not going for survival garden vibe and you don't necessarily want seeds that are good for hot and dry and early harvest or aren't great for late harvest or you know frost tolerance or things of that nature, then what you may be looking for is actual flavor or texture. And if you notice that this tomato has a nice texture or this tomato cans really nicely, rather than going next year and buying seeds from the store, try saving seeds from the tomato that came out of your garden. The reason for this is because not only is that plant going to have very similar flavor and texture, if not identical, it will also be more adapted to thriving and surviving in your garden's environment. It's definitely something to keep in mind if you're a foodie looking for that really specific taste, texture, etc., and so forth. If you're trying to save up a seed bank, I really, truly, heavily encourage you to be picky about what you're saving and don't just save willy-nilly. Capture the plants that are doing the most for you in your environment. As the years go on, you are more and more likely to have a seed bank or a seed vault that is specifically designed for your backyard or for your property. It sounds weird. I used to do this with wheat because I used to breed wheat and it, that's something that we did. We looked for very specific characteristics such as frost tolerance or height or the protein values in the actual seeds themselves, all the way to coloration, hardness, you name it, literally, moisture even. All these characteristics we would find. If we liked it, we would keep it. If we didn't, we threw it out. And on a scientific level, we were very specific in building up a seed vault that had crosses or uh, variations of it that we, we really wanted to truly capture. And so when you do that in your garden, you're gonna see really good, really, really great results. So like I said, be picky and make sure you're marking things down. But as you see things producing, you like what you like like there's a big tomato here i like the look of that big tomato i'm gonna tag it and i'm going to bag some seeds off of it you can still use the plant just 
need a couple seeds. You can still use the fruit for whatever you want to use it for. In that case, that's a tomato sandwich in its future, <laughs> but you can save seeds from it um, and still eat it and whatever. You don't need the whole fruit and it doesn't have to be a wasteful process whatsoever. So I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.